Okay. Hi, I'm Daniela Wolterstorfer. A lot of you know me as Danny. I'm here with the uh, OSM US board. I'm a sitting member and I'm very happy to be one. And I also, aside from that, I have a, a day job with Cambridge Systematics. I'm a GIS expert and transportation consultant. My background is in urban planning and transportation engineering, hence being in this, this group, this session. So um, today I'm going to talk about something that is very passionate to me. And those who know me are probably aware of this and are probably tired because you've seen me talk about this many times and I've posted on Slack many questions. And it's the curb. But um, I'm actually not going to talk about mapping the KERB, which is like how it's labeled and tagged in OSM. Um, I'm going to, so for the, Oh, well, I had, I had animations. Wait. You can see them, right? No. Oh, oh no. Oh, it, okay. It's not in order. Oh, I had a cool animation. Okay, whatever. Anyway, for the purposes of curb management, uh, we're going to treat the curb as an asset that houses many other assets. Um, if you are in the transportation industry, you probably heard about asset management in transportation. And a little secret about um, a lot of agencies, governmental agencies, uh, municipalities, etc., is that their data can be really messy, if you don't know. Um, or they could have various departments within their own agency where uh, they're not working together. So there's no standard way of having an inventory of the assets. Uh, you could have waste management easily. That's a department with, within a municipality that takes care of waste management, but they don't necessarily work together with sign management, even though they're sharing the same geography. Like within a corridor, you're gonna, they're going to be using the same curb for both purposes. All right, so back to mini assets within the big asset that is the curb. So again, waste management, what have you. Uh, those are what I want to focus on, like different kinds of uh, management within the curb. So that includes mapping. Uh, you have a bike lane over there. Mm, I have a bunch of photos that are not popping up. OK, well, bus stops, bike lanes, uh, trees, street parking, um, bike sharing. No, oh, you don't see it. Nothing's popping up. There you go. Okay. Uh, bike sharing stations, uh, dockless parking, um, or you know, like some areas in the U.S. have this, but in Europe you see a lot of like the the bike park cover bike parking that are within parking slots on the street. So different uses of um, things on the street side of the curb and then on the sidewalk side of the curb. So for um, asset management for, regarding the curb. For certain clients that I worked with, uh, depending on the municipality, like I had one that wanted to solely focus on loading areas, so anything within the street side of the curb. But then there are others that want to focus on both because you also need, okay, so there's loading, but is there a, a lower curb ramp or something? Is it accessible? Like, is it, if it's a TNC, Uber, Lyft, drop off, pickup, is it actually assess accessible also for uh, people with certain disabilities or someone with a stroller? So you. Ideally, you would want to focus on both sides of the curve. Uh, so the good thing is that these are all things that we can map in OSM, and we know how to map in OSM. They're fairly easy. They're points of interest for the most part, uh, unless you have a parking area and then you just do a polygon or whatnot. But um, this is all data that cities can definitely benefit with uh, and from. They can have a one-stop shop for this data rather than having PDFs of bus stops. I don't know if you've ever encountered that kind of data. It's not fun, and then you have to visualize it and then inventory it and somehow manage it, and all you have is like hand-drawn bus stops on PDFs for a whole city. So not, not quite ideal. So um, in this way, you can help municipalities, MPOs, um, small transit agencies work together, uh, since in a way the data is standardized, You're getting it from the same place. So I wanted to pull an example from, uh, from Tucson. 
Uh, fortunately, it's not super well mapped, so I, I mapped a little bit for this. I chose this corridor since it had uh, interesting points of points of interest. Uh, so this snippet has um, it's East Congress Street. You can see some of the assets. It has uh, bike parking, the tram stop, not tram, tram stop, uh, some trees. But you can also map a lot more. Like there are certainly there are benches there, and there's uh, waste bins. There's a lot more that could definitely be mapped. There's parkings, and even but with just even the information here, which is not a lot, a city could benefit um, in noting. Okay, so per, can you see my mouse? No. Okay. So on the side where. Okay. So. Congress Street and 6th Avenue, where you see the trees mapped, you actually can see that there are no, uh, there's no bike parking there. So perhaps the city could be like, hey, we actually, on that corridor, it's pretty commercial. Why don't we designate a loading zone? Or why don't we designate a DNC, Uber, Lyft, drop up pickup area? We have the space and we can just do the same that we did for the block adjacent, but instead of bike parking, do it for something else. Um, and also, you know, just to have the inventory to map to properly manage those assets. Uh, this is a, if you've seen my talk at Mapping USA, I show this example because I really like it. It's a, a commercial corner in Glen Falls, New York, and I I think it's quite impressive. It has a lot of POIs really well mapped. There are street lamps, trees, mail drop boxes, benches, waste baskets fire hydrants, bicycle parking, regular street parking, and then they all have the proper tax. So like if it's street parking, two hour free parking, but then it's residential parking at nighttime for free. Like everything is really properly mapped. And this is, if I'm not sure if Glen Falls, like again, I'm not talking about specific project I've worked on. I'm not pulling up actual clients examples, but it'd be interesting if Glen Falls is actually using this data to properly manage the curve and manage that corridor and the assets that make up that corridor that make up the curve. Uh, so uh, ideally, the reason why I'm doing is I'm sort of pushing this, it, this vision of um, having cities want to use OSM to manage the curve instead of hiring uh, certain companies that you know are going out there mapping everything and then they're selling that data and it's not open data. And if they, if the city wants uh, the fire hydrants map, they're they're gonna they're gonna, ha they're gonna um, charge like five thousand dollars extra. But it's essentially something that everyone can do, and then then the cities could do it themselves. They could have a team that could do it. They could have existing data already, and they're not even aware of it. Um, oh, so with with all these these assets mapped. Cities, uh, sorry, this is the wrong presentation. Okay, yeah, so with all of these assets mapped, the cities could then be better informed to incorporate more bus lanes, bike parking, protective bike infrastructure, or making uh, the pedestrian experience safer in many ways, and do better um, management or also of vehicular traffic. Because if you're managing the assets that make up the curb, you can actually lower the speed limit without putting signs all over. Um, so just a, a little thing that I'm working on and pushing for. Um, and I wanted to also open it up to see, I'm assuming since I'm in this slot that I have other fellow transportation planners or engineers here. And if so, if you are have worked in this realm of curb planning or uh, freight management for loading zones, things like that. Um, if you think that this is something municipalities or MPOs um, could benefit from, or if I'm going the wrong route, um, essentially what moved me to doing this on OSM again is the lack of coordination, and it's it's not the municipality's fault. It's this for. God knows how many years they've worked like that. They have different departments within one city and they're not working together and their formats of data are not the same. So it's a mess and then they wanna implement something new and they realize, oh my goodness, we have to work together. So um, think of like GTFS, standardized something for public transit and it, it's great, we all use it. 
And if you're not in transportation, you probably don't know what I'm talking about. But um, I think it would be great to have something that, you know, everyone can just use and all little departments can work together. So I want to hear from you too. And yeah, it was short. Yeah. 